Desiring to address the hospital board should turn in a speaker card to the board secretary. If the citizen comment pertains to an item on the agenda today, the comment will be heard early in the meeting. Otherwise, it will be heard toward the end. Speakers are asked to limit their comments to five minutes. Vendors, suppliers, or persons seeking hospital contracts awarded on a competitive basis are reminded that their ability to address the board may be restricted by the terms of the invitation for bid, the request for a proposal, or other purchasing criteria. Lastly, the board has established a claims adjustment review panel comprised of representatives of this board, the medical staff, administration, and legal counsel to review and negotiate the settlement of claims accordingly the board will not entertain comments or discuss or negotiate claims at this point. Okay, uh, I see first of all approval of the orders of the day. Ask for a motion, please. Second. All those in favor respond by saying yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Against, it carries, thank you. The next item is approval uh, seeking approval for the minutes of the March 15th meeting. I have a second. Okay. All those in favor respond yes. 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 Carried, thank you. Uh, there are no board reports. First up is the report of the medical staff. Dr. Jack Watson, please, doctor. Um, thank you. Um, we would, uh, like to seek approval of the resolution regarding Venice. Um, I'll ask uh, Carol Ann to read the resolution regarding the appointment of the medical staff leadership for Sarasota Memorial Hospital Carol, in Venice. Henry. So this is a resolution of the Sarasota County Public Hospital Board related to the appointment of medical staff officers, leaders, and members. Whereas necessary steps are underway to facilitate the opening of Sarasota Memorial Hospital Venice, here and after referred to as SMH Venice, which is expected to take place on November 1, 2021. And whereas the board has adopted all medical staff bylaws and bylaws related documents and application forms necessary to begin issuing applications for appointment and privileges and thereafter processing such applications. And whereas under the medical staff bylaws, all active staff members must among other things, be involved in at least 24 patient contacts per two year appointment, with new members being appointed to the active staff based on their expected practice patterns at SMH Venice. And whereas in order to establish the orderly credentialing of the medical staff to facilitate opening, the board has determined it would be helpful to appoint in consultation with the physician advisory committee, the medical staff officers who shall serve on behalf of the medical staff when SMH Venice is open, as well as all department chairpersons and at-large members of the medical executive committee so that the medical executive committee can begin to carry out its duties described in the medical staff bylaws and policies. And whereas under the SMH Venice medical staff bylaws, all medical staff leaders, including medical staff officers, department chairpersons, section chiefs, and committee chairpersons must be appointed to the active staff for a period of five years in order to be eligible to serve in such positions unless an exception is recommended by the Medical Executive Committee and approved by the board. Now, therefore, be it resolved that SMH Venice will begin issuing applications for appointment and clinical privileges and thereafter begin processing such applications for the medical staff and advanced practice professionals who seek to practice at SMH Venice. Be it further resolved that the board confirms that for initial appointments to the medical staff of SMH Venice, New members will be permitted to seek appointment directly to the active staff if they expect their practices to satisfy the patient contact requirements set forth in the bylaws, subject to review and final action by the board, and the board reserves the authority to determine appropriate staff categories for all members. Be it further resolved that the following individuals will be appointed as officers, department chairs, department chairs elect, and members at large of the medical executive committee, and shall serve for the terms described in the following schedule 
so that once constituted, the Medical Executive Committee will have the authority to fulfill any and all responsibilities of the Medical Ex Executive Committee and or the Credentials Committee that are set forth in the medical staff bylaws or any related medical staff documents. With various terms, the following are in the schedule for Chief of Staff, Chris Jefferson, Secretary Treasurer, Noel Mon for the Chair of the Department of Medicine, Heidi Gedeke, for Chair-Elect of the Department of Medicine, Ravi Kondapali, for Chair of the Department of Surgery, Isam Halabi, for Chair-Elect of the Department of Surgery, Gregory Lomas, for Chair of the Department of Special Services, Ryan Snitowski, for Chair-Elect of the Department of Special Services, Haidar Okonobo, for Chair of the Department of Women and Children's, Kyle Garner, for Chair-Elect of the Department of Women's and Children, Susan Nim, at-large member of Medical Executive Lorraine Cho, and at-large member, Cindy von Waldner. And finally, the at-large additional position due to there being no Chief of Staff elect or past Chief of Staff position for the first year is John Wassenaar. Be it further resolved that for these initial appointments, the board waives the requirement that such appointments can only be conferred upon members of the medical staff who have been appointed to the active staff for a period of five years, absent medical executive committee recommendation, and hereby approve such appointments in the absence of such a recommendation. If adopted, this will become effective today. Do you need a motion of adopting the resolution? I move approval. I second. Resolution. Any questions or comments? All those in favor respond by saying yes. Yes. Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, Carol Ann. Sure. Next up is the Secretary's report, Sarah Lodge, please. Oh, sorry, sorry. Here's one, one other motion that we would entertain. On behalf of the leadership of the SMH Venus Hospital, I would ask for a motion to approve the delineation of privileges forms for anesthesiology and for advanced practice professionals in the disciplines of cardiothoracic surgery, OBGYN, pulmonary critical care, emergency medicine, general and pediatric medicine, neonatology, prosopedic surgery, psychiatry, radiology, surgical operating room, and urology as recommended by SMH Venice Physician Advisory Board. We have a second. second. All those in favor respond by saying yes. yes. Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you sir. Hello? Okay. Thank you. Our next board meeting will be on Monday, May 17th, 2021. From 9 to 10.30, we'll have the Human Resource Committee. From 10.30 to noon, Finance Committee. From noon to 12.30, the closed session of hospital board meeting. From 12.30 to 2, board lunch and issues and financial review. From 2 to 4, the board meeting. Thank you. Treasurer's report, Joseph D. Virgilio. Joe, please. Just one item uh, today. Um, I move approval of bad debt and charity care for the month ending March 31st, 2021, in the amount of $27,640,000. Second, please. Second. All those in favor respond by saying yes. Yes. Motion carries. Financial uh, highlights, Mr. Bill Holgen, our CFO. Bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have the highlights here, and we'll start with um, system revenue. And I'll point out that the fiscal year to date numbers represent six months of activity. For total revenue for March, we had 107,905,000 compared to a budget of 99,933,000. This year to date, total revenue of 569,174,000 compared to a budget of 556,932,000. Our expenses in the rating agency format for the system for March, 95 million. 542,000, budget of 93,821,000. Fiscal year to date, total expenses of 520,418,000, compared to a budget of 524,019,000. The operating income for the system in the rating agency format, 
for March, 12,363,000, which was an operating margin of 11.5%, compared favorably to the budget of 6,112,000, which was a budget operating margin of 6.1%. Through six months of our fiscal year, we have operating income of 448 million 756,000, which was an operating margin of 8.6% through six months. This compares to the budget of 32,913,000, we budgeted through six months, an operating margin of 5.9%. Statistics for the hospital, and these are six months, March year to date numbers. I would say the occupancy, 648 patients, compared to a budget of 606 patients. The average acute length of stay, so far 4.7 days, and last year was 4.33 days. Admissions, so far through six months, 22,260, compared to a budget of 22,263. Continuing on with hospital statistics, surgery cases, 11,913, compared to a budget of 12,614. And so far through six months, we've had 1,881 births, compared to a budget of 1,977. The outpatient registrations, through six months, 247,333, compared to a budget of 253,043. And our two emergency care centers have had combined registrations of 55,099, compared to a budget of 64,522. And through six months of activity, our case mix index for all patients is 1.89, compared uh, for um, Medicare patients, 2.03. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Mr. Any questions? Any questions? Thank you, Bill. Committee reports, mission, and planning. Sharon, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This morning, the mission and planning committee met. After approving the minutes of our February 16th meeting, we heard a presentation from Aaron Schneck, Director of Public Safety and Emergency Management and the 2021 Sarasota County Local Mitigation Strategy Resolution. At this time, I move adoption of the 2021 Sarasota County Local Mitigation Strategy Resolution to be attached to the original of these minutes as recommended by the Mission and Planning Committee. Okay. Okay. Questions? Discussion? All in favor say yes. yes. Yeah. Opposed? Motion passes. For the next presentation, President of Sarasota Memorial Hospital, Sarasota, Lori Lang, Chief Financial Officer, Bill Wojan, and Director of the Brian J. Jellison Cancer Institute, Kelly Batista, presented on the completion of the Jellison Cancer Institute vision which includes plans to expand outpatient cancer care. Kelly updated the board on the recent achievements of the Jellison Cancer Institute, including opening up the Radiation Oncology Center at University Parkway, the progress of the Oncology Tower construction, and recruitment of specialty physicians. In addition, the Sarasota Memorial Healthcare Foundation was gifted $25 million, the largest gift to date by the Brian and Sheila Jefferson Family Foundation to support the Cancer Institute. Lori detailed the outpatient cancer care expansion plans, including the outpatient cancer pavilion at the main campus, expected to be completed in 2025, and the cancer center at Venice, expected to be completed in 2023. The presentation concluded with Bill presenting the system's financial projections. I move approval of the expenditure for a schematic design of the Brian J. Jellison Cancer Institute Cancer Pavilion at 
SMH Venice and the outpatient building of the Brian B. Jefferson Cancer Institute at SMH Sarasota in an amount not to exceed four million as recommended by the Mission and Planning Committee. Do we have a second? Yes. Any discussion or questions? All in favor say yes. yes. No opposed? Motion passes. The final presentation to the committee was the ranking recommendations for a schematic design for the bed tower expansion at Venice Hospital. Sharon Rauch, president of Sarasota Memorial Hospital, Venice, presented the top three architectural and contractor firms as determined by the Public Selection Committee. Based on the presentation and consistent with the public selection process, I move approval of the ranking of the general contractors and design teams as follows. For general contractors, Gilbane Building Company, Bar and Bar, Brassfell and Gorey. And for the design team, Vlad Architects, Gresham Smith, TRO, Jug Brennan, as recommended by the Public Selection Committee and the Mission and Planning Committee. Second? Discussion or questions? All in favor say yes. yes. Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Next, our president's report, David Berender. David? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm going to start like I do um, each month by looking at our organizational report card and looking through our five areas of concentration. Uh, the first area is out of service, and we look at our system um, patient experience. And within that, our likelihood of recommending, and we have a goal of having eight out of 10 of our service areas be greater than or equal to the 75th percentile. I could report to the board today that we are actually hitting our goal at 8 out of 10. I'll show you the detail on that here in a minute. In the people area, we have our goal of having new hire retention, which is our percentage of full, regular full part-time employees hired in FY2021 that are still employed as of um, September 30th, 2021. We have a goal of having this be at 83% or higher. Uh, have to report we are um, exceeding that goal as well at uh, almost 92 percent. In the quality section, we have a goal of having our infection prevention, or, or, which is our combined overall standardized infection rate, be less than 0.88. Uh, happy to report, but we are doing better than that at 0.69. Uh, just to remind the board that we uh, that the national our standard would be 1.0, so we already have our goal set quite a bit lower than the national standards, and we're, we're um, exceeding that very well. In the finance section, uh, you heard our report by our CFO Bill Logan just earlier, uh, but our our goal is having our operating margin uh, meet our budget, which is at 5.5 percent, and right now we're projecting that uh, to exceed that by year end at 6.8 percent. And then finally, in the growth section, we have two goals within growth. The first being our inpatient admissions and outpatient um, observation patients. We have a goal of having 51,164 for the year. Uh, we're trending lower than that at this point at 50,972. In our outpatient registrations, we have a goal of hitting for the year 977,000 uh, patients. We're also trending below that at this point at 961,000. When we look at a little bit more detail on patient experience report, uh, we have our likelihood of recommending on, on, the, on the far left, and we have the, the uh, 10 different areas that we look at for that uh, listed there. Uh, the middle uh, score is what our year-to-date score is. The next uh, column over uh, is the national median score, and then finally the 75th percentile score. Uh, so I'm happy to report that we are meeting 10 out of 10 in the national median uh, group, and out of the 75th percentile, we're hitting 8 out of 10, which is, is the goal. The two that we have um, uh, a miss on right now is in our NICU. Uh, we're slightly uh, missing on that number, uh, and we're, we're slightly missing on our emergency room here on the main campus. 
switching topics, we'll look at our COVID treatment offered at SMH uh, that's showing some promising results. A monoclonal um, uh, antibody cocktail developed by Renegon, Regeneron cut the risk of hospitalization and death by 70% when given to high risk COVID 19 patients in a large clinical trial. The drug maker announced recently um, SMH was among 27 sites uh, participating in that trial. Sarasota Memorial is among a number of hospitals allocated, uh, hospitals allocated to therapy for non-hospitalized patients. People over 65 um, are eligible for the outpatient therapy, as are those aged 18 and older who have certain medical conditions that put them at higher risk for complications. A physician referral is needed to determine eligibility. SMH expert seeks to overcome ha uh, vaccine hesitancy. Um, this was uh, Dr. Uh, Manuel Cordillo, who has been really our champion all along throughout the, the COVID process here, uh, and has really um, been a, a, an asset that, that, that could not be overstated, uh, his importance to the, the community. The state and federal agencies continue to expand eligibility requirements for COVID-19 vaccination, making it possible for millions more people to get effective protection against this virus. The challenge now is getting shots in those eligible arms so we can return to normal and put the end to this global pandemic. SMH infectious disease specialist, Dr. Manuel Cordillo, has released a blog, post, and video to help dispel some of the common myths that may lead to vaccine hesitancy. And I would just encourage anyone in the public uh, to go on to this to, to our website and click this um, link so you'll be make, make sure that you're educated about the process. Physicians recognized on Doctors' Day. On March 30th, Sarasota Memorial joined the nation in celebrating Doctors' Day. Really an opportunity to thank our physicians for the exceptional care they provide to our patients each and every day. Throughout the pandemic, our medical staff members have helped lead the fight against COVID-19, selfishly serving on the front lines while championing the most effective treatments and infection prevention safeguards. These skilled and compassionate providers also devote countless hours to the, to the training of the next generation of physicians and share their expertise wherever needed. So on behalf of the hospital and, and administration and the board, we'd just like to thank all of our physicians for everything that we do. Dr. Wazza, please pass it along to your colleagues. Thank you very much. Next, we have a local EMT specialist uh, joining uh, First Physicians Group. Sarasota Memorial welcomed uh, the ears, nose, and throat specialist of the Silverstein Institute into its First Physician Group network last month, bringing the Institute and all four of its locations under the FPG umbrella and within the Sarasota Memorial Healthcare System. Founded in Sarasota in 1979 by board certified ENT physician um, Herb Silverstein, the Silverstein Institute is an, is an internationally renowned practice dedicated to treating conditions and diseases of the ear, no, ears, nose, and throat, as well as conducting research and driving innovation, innovation in the field. So, our own Dr. Wazen is part of that group, and Dr. Wazen, we very much um, are honored to have you join uh, First Physicians Group as, as well as your colleagues. So, thank you. Thank you. Joint Commission Survey Preparation. Sarasota Memorial's Joint Commission Accreditation Survey is expected to take some time between now and May 18. Hospitals undergo this unannounced survey every three years to determine compliance with CMS requirements and share our high quality of care. The organization recently conducted a mock survey to evaluate readiness um, for this one. So it, this is something that our quality teams, our nursing teams, really everyone in the hospital uh, rallies around each and every year. So on top of record census numbers, we're, we're also uh, doing that. Dr. Fiorica, I, I know that you and um, uh, Mary are, are very much uh, over, over your heads in this right now. So thank you for your uh, efforts. So new studio to share key health information. Uh, the Sarasota Memorial recently opened a new multimedia studio to produce health and wellness videos, public service announcements, podcasts, and educational videos to keep our community and staff informed on important health issues. The studio is named in honor of Deb Cavanaugh, who donated 300,000 to the Sarasota Memorial Healthcare Foundation to fund the multimedia program. 
So Mason, I, I know you're sitting behind me somewhere. Um, we very much appreciate the foundation um, being involved in this and, and, and certainly um, Ms. Kavanaugh as well. Thank you. Construction progress on SMH Venice. Progress over the past month includes installation of lighting on the top left and terrazzo flooring on the top right. Uh, last month, the crew celebrated the topping out of the parking garage uh, in the bottom picture, and the campus remains on track to open uh, this fall 2021. And uh, I'll tell you that, that our president of SMH got a share in some of these pictures. And, uh, and I said, gosh, Sharon, it looks so much better when I went and had no walls. So uh, I appreciate everything that you're doing to keep this going. I'm not wrong, though, am I? <laughs> Uh, also, we have our other large project going on right now, our ecology tower. Um, the front driveway configuration is underway. Our level one glass installation is not going. Level three floor installation and paintings in progress. Our levels four through eight drywall is underway, along with mechanical, electrical, and plumbing work. The roof is nearing completion, and 80% of the OCA inspections are, on, on, are occurring on all floors. This project is also scheduled to open in fall 2021. Lori Lang, our president here uh, of SMH Sarasota, has is, is been uh, driving this. Uh, and Lori, I, I did take a tour of it uh, about a week ago. That's pretty phenomenal uh, what you guys are doing and, and how this is looking. I will give you a prediction that the, the cafeteria that's on the eighth floor is going to get overrun by our staff. I'm not sure how you're going to do it because it's so incredible up there. So. Thank you for all you're doing. And stepping up staff recruitment, uh, we're, we're recruiting for our, just about every position you can imagine uh, for SMH Venice, the Cancer Institute, and other key programs. Um, it is in full swing with billboards like the one you see above, posted throughout the region, and accompanying radio campaign and a full complement of HR uh, driven initiatives. Uh, there, we, we currently have over 7,000 uh, team members at work at SMH right now. Fully anticipate in the next couple of years that number is going to exceed 10,000. So we have uh, openings for people who, who want to be part of something big. And that is my report. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for David? David, thank you. Yes, please. Uh, there is no consent agenda. Karen, do we have anyone wishing to speak? No, sir. Thank you. Legal matters, Caroline. Thank you. Thank you. Having completed our agenda, we stand adjourned. Thank you.